Morning. Welcome to Tuesdays this morning. Hello. <laughs> it's it's very, very, it's it's very casual. I'm, just, I'm feeling really playful today. You ever have those days where you suddenly think, oh, actually, I just need to cause trouble today. I don't want to be normal today. OK. And I feel a bit like that today. I well, like do you know it. what? We are, we are actually um, in the midst of someone very special uh, currently. Do you know Josie uh, just got a uh, standing ovation in Marks and Spencer's in uh, Bristol? Did you? What for? <laughs> everybody. <laughs> um, so I was there doing my shopping and um, everybody just started clapping. They said, thank Good you day. so much. <laughs> yeah. What, what yeah. was a recording of the moment? <laughs> <laughs> what, for your shopping ability? They said, thanks for wearing our dresses. Oh, Martin I see. Dresses. It, was dresses. Yeah. it was that. So they started clapping. I was like that with my with my. I bag. thought it was just a shop. You missed that bit. <laughs> oh, no. It was just your shopping. No, they no. the basket. I love Look what you've got. You know, I've worked in fashion for almost 30 years and no-one's given me a round of applause in a shop. No. No one really? ever. Missing you go, out yours. Missing out yours like that with my bags. Thank you. We all need to be a bit more... <laughs> Thank you. We all need to be a bit more Josie, yeah. what we need to be. <laughs> just like to thank my mum, my family. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, so oh, thanks well, for that. Well yeah. you. That's yeah. very nice. Um, Holly, obviously, still got uh, Rona, so um, uh, sending her massive love uh, and um, sort of texting her throughout the day and checking up she's OK, so uh, she's fine, but just a annoyed. Um, so, uh, lots of love. Get well soon. Get well soon, Holes. Um, right. Do you want to know what's coming up on the show today? I expect Me. you're probably in it at some stage. Me. Uh, Gox, back <laughs> in the kitchen. Oh, there you are. To put <laughs> his twist on a, on a British classic. Um, what are you making? I am making for you bubble and squeak, but Asian flavoured. So, shiitake mushrooms, bean sprouts, chilli, garlic, soy sauce, miso in there as well. It is so... Delicious. What is, what is so delicious? Look at your face. Can I have, do I have to add the egg on the you top? Know, do you know what? I, I said this to Natalie, our, our wonderful food producer. I said, Philip doesn't like a yolk, does he? No, you no, like the white. The white. So, but you have to have the egg, but then we yeah. can take the egg off. You can put the yolk on. You can just have the yolk. I'm happy, happy with that. Okay, we'll, we'll work it out somehow, but it is so delicious. It looks lovely. Mm, I See you in a bit. Thank you. cannot wait. I think it's so underrated, Bubble and Squeak. Um, now, with brighter days on the way, Cat Farmer is getting you ready for the new season with her top spring jackets. Good morning, Cat. Good morning. Well, it's official. Spring has sprung. And dare I say it, it might be time to pack away your winter coat in favour of a spring jacket. Join me later with my edit of the best out there. That's a lovely day in a lovely location. Thank you very much. It looks gorgeous. Uh, also, part of uh, ongoing economic sanctions, shops and supermarkets have been banned from selling Russian vodka from today. So if you're wondering what to buy, Helen McGinn is here with her top alternatives. Morning. Oh, morning. Yes, I have got all the vodkas. They're from all over the place. There are some really lovely ones around now, so it's it's just, I'm so excited that I'm going to be able to get to shine a light on some of them. It is interesting, though, because we were just talking before the show, and the one that begins with S and ends in Murnoff um, is actually not made in Russia. No, it's not. So, it's, funny enough, it's made everywhere except Russia, and it's actually owned by a British company. So, don't pour the Smirnoff down the sink quite yet. Uh, yeah, well, uh, but there are alternatives, and you've got a Ukrainian one as well, haven't you? Yeah, we've got Ukraine, Cornish, Scottish, Polish. It's all here. Lovely. Oh, Cornish. I cannot wait for that. That's especially um, for you, Josie. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, also on today's show, Clodagh sampling New York's most iconic dishes as she continues her adventure around the Big Apple at quarter to 11. We'll be speaking to Rafe Spall about taking on the role of Atticus Finch in the new production of To Kill a Mockingbird. That's at 10 past 11. And Sharon Marshall will be here with all the latest soap gossip at 20 to 12. Now then, do you remember two months ago we spoke to Colin Craig Brown, who believed that he'd found the world's largest potato in his back garden? But before he could be awarded the historic title, Guinness World Records asked for a slither of the mystery vegetable to be sent off for DNA testing. Well, um, I've got the results here. He knows these, by the way. It's not going to come as a surprise to him. Um, and... 
dog is not a potato. As with all Guinness World Record title hopefuls, every application is taken seriously and must be backed with firm evidence, and Doug the Spud was no exception. This is from Adam Millwood, managing editor of Guinness World Records. This has been a fascinating journey, and although Doug may not be a spud, he is a very impressive good. So Doug is a good. Colin joins us now from his home in New Zealand alongside vegetable gardener uh, Anna Greenland. Uh, so welcome to you. Um, Doug uh, is, is a good. Um, Colin, uh, so how, how did you find out? Well, same way you did from Adam. Um, but unfortunately, he's a tuber that has grown from the root system on a good plant. So he's, he's, he's grown underground, like all rhizomes or tubers or type of things. But, yeah, he's come from a gourd plant. And the mysterious part is, how the heck did he get in my garden? <laughs> Precisely. You've waited... Hey. You've, you've waited two months. I've never grown gourds. No. <laughs> I don't know never, how it got there. Never grown a good. I mean, it looks like an alien, so it's possible yeah. that it dropped out of space. But um, but but waiting two months nah, for, it's for those it's those plant breeders. <laughs> you say you can't argue with the science. Were you disappointed? No. Um. Yes and no. Um. It's not like um we've strived to do this. It's just a you know a happy happy coincidence. It's just what we found. It's like. You know, we didn't plan to grow the big tomato, p big potato, or the big tuba. It's like they never planned to find the welcome stranger, the world's biggest gold nugget either. You know, they weren't gold miners; they were just drunks coming home from the pub, and they kicked it on the side of the road, a bit like this. Um, no, but no, hey, yeah, it was it was a bit of a deflation oh. to find out that you know he wasn't a potato. <laughs> but, hey, as you walk along through life, these shitty sandwiches are... <laughs> Someone tucks sorry, them in your lunch sorry, box. Sorry. <laughs> um, sorry about that. But, um, so, Doug the Gourd has had uh, quite the rise to stardom. Do you think he's enjoyed all the attention? Oh, he's loved every minute of it. He wants it to last forever. Doug's thinking he might go on a whirlwind tour of the nation and start his own Twitter page. It's a, it'd be a great idea. How, how long? <laughs> We've been talking to you for quite a while. <laughs> it's taken two months to get the, the, the result, and he's still there. Um, how, how long does a good last? Yeah, well, he's not a good. He's, oh. he's, a, he's, a, he's a tuber that's grown on the roots of a good plant. Oh. Right? Right. And how does it last? As long as he wants to, because I'm keeping him in... I'm keeping him in the deep freeze. Okay. So you've got so, him out specially you know, for He comes out for a bit of fresh air and he goes back into the freezer and he's a pretty chilled out chappy. Well, he would um, be. Any plans to turn him into vodka <laughs> still or? I did. I did plan to turn him into vodka. Um, but it'd be a bit like, um, I don't know, barbecuing your, your pet lamb. Oh. You know? Yeah. Yeah, totally yeah. understand. Just no, we get do that. that. We get no, of course, we get that. <laughs> um, let's uh, let's talk to uh, to Anna. She's a gardener and a cook. She's been growing organic veg since two thousand and five. Head gardener at Soho Farmhouse. Um, so so Anna, um, uh, the, the, this is uh, it's a freak in his garden. How, how, <coughs> how do you think it got there? Well, I don't know. I mean, gourds are part of a wider family of plants um, that we're all quite familiar with. So cucumbers, um, squashes, winter squashes, pumpkins, um, melons. So perhaps, you know, he grew a derivative of one of those, um, potentially. Um, you can get some quite interesting types of gourds that grow in warmer climates. So potentially New Zealand, um, you know, they come from Southeast Asia or India, parts of Africa. Um, and they're kind of really interesting looking, you know, you can um, dry them out and use them as musical instruments or as storage vessels um, or, or just pretty ornaments like the ones you can see in the pictures. Um, 
So they're quite a mad family of vegetables, um, quite an interesting one to grow. But as to how, how that got there, I've never seen anything like that before. So it's, uh, it's a mystery. And Anna, with all your experience, how do you think that, you know, spud got so big? Well, I guess, um, I mean, I'm a UK grower, but I imagine the climate in New Zealand, um, you know, if there's lots of moisture, lots of warmth, um, and that particular type of, of variety that, um, you know, if it was a sort of a wild um, cucumber of some sort, then potentially it was just sort of supercharged, um, or it's, it's just that particular type of, um, of, of gourd that has that big root like that. So if, if Colin wanted to grow something enormous now, uh, clearly the soil around his house, the climate uh, is, is ripe for that. How does he go about, if he were to go for a potato, we'll ask him in a moment, if he were to go for a giant potato, what's the best way to do it? Well, I'd say start with chitting them. So that's chit, C-H. <laughs> I've got to um, apologise again. Yeah, that word's coming up a lot. Um, so you take the, the potato tuber and put it in, say, um, an egg box and let the little shoots um, sprout before you put them in the ground just to get a head start. And then I would say lots of really good muck, lots of, um, of dung if he's got access to that, um, some seaweed fertiliser, natural fertilisers, just to sort of supercharge it. And, and if he really wants to get a massive kind of crop, he could try growing them in big drums or dustbins 40 litre kind of compost sacks, um, which is something you can do at home as well. So um, that means that if your soil is potentially a bit compacted or a little bit tricky, you can get a really good bumper crop that way. Well, there you go. Um, if, uh, so bearing in mind all of that information you just got from Anna, Colin, um, would, you, would you attempt to, to grow the, the, the big potato? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um... Through this whole process, I've um, gathered quite a significant amount of scientific um, uh, information about um, growing potatoes or even large rhizomes from, you know, strange plants. But, um, yeah, no, I'd pump him up on phosphates. I'd fill him right up with a, a good handful of super every now and then. Yeah. Um, and a nice friable soil. Like she said about chitting them first, well got to remember that the first shoot that comes up is the king and that's the one that's going to be the dominant one so you need to re remove all the other little shoots so that you've only got the king there right Colin, so why all is... the energy can go into one why why why'd you put sunglasses on him well you know he's he he reckons he's he's gained celebrity status, so right. he's been watching the you know the Kardashians on telly when he's been out, and um, you know he reckons he should be allowed to have um, you know sunglasses and all yeah. the bright lights and stuff. Well, he's probably he's been yeah. in the freezer, so the chances are it's a bit bright when you come out of that if you've been in there a while. Colin, thank you, thank you. very much indeed. Anna, thank you very much indeed. Um, obviously, Colin, you grow that big potato, you're straight back on here again. Enjoy the New Zealand tour of, uh, of, of Doug. Um, hopefully it will end up being worldwide. Thank you, mate. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Anna. Bye. Thank you. See ya. There you go. Uh, right, very varied show today. Still to come, it's been 10 years since he came perilously close to death. We'll be speaking to former footballer Fabrice Moamba about his miracle recovery. That's right after the break.